The Rainbow Theater presents Short Circuit. You can read along with me in your book. When you hear this, turn the page. Let's begin now. Short Circuit. Dr. Marner and his team at Nova Robotics have developed five very versatile robots armed with lasers. They were created by a young man, Newton Crosby, who is concerned more with the machines themselves than with their military application. After a successful demonstration, robot number five is subjected to a great overload when the electricity supply is struck by lightning. Instead of following its fellows, it deviates from its course and is accidentally pushed into a garbage truck and driven away. As soon as it is missed, Crosby goes to the control room and makes contact with it, but it refuses to obey orders, and when they tune in to its homing device, Marner becomes alarmed. Good Lord! It's outside the fence, and its laser is still armed. Crosby, what's it going to do? Hard to say. I mean, it's malfunctioning. Maybe it won't do anything. Schroeder, the security chief, is not convinced. But it could decide to blow away anything that moves, couldn't it? It could. Marner looks horrified. It's not coming back. We've got to destroy it, Crosby. Are you serious? Blow it up? How am I going to study it? We should at least make some effort to retrieve it. Okay, you got 20 minutes. I just want Schroeder out there as backup. You understand, Schroeder? You don't have to blow it up. But Schroeder is not so sure when he gives orders to his men. Whatever it takes to put that goddamn contraption out of commission, boys, that's what you do. Meanwhile, number five falls off the garbage truck and over a bridge. He lands on a catering truck passing on the freeway beneath. His pursuers are amazed as the homing device shows him traveling even further from the laboratory. The truck is driven by Stephanie Thurber, an attractive young woman who is very much into health foods and stray animals. When she gets home, she is disturbed by strange sounds coming from her truck. Hey, get out of there! The serving window swings open and reveals number five. At first, Stephanie is terrified, but she quickly recovers. I knew they'd pick me. I just knew it. Welcome to my planet. Don't be scared. I am a friend. Friend, this is Earth. Malfunction. Need input. Input. That's information, right? Why don't you come in the house? We can talk, uh, communicate, input. Oh, come on, it's okay. Walk this way. Uh, roll this way. Uh, move out. Uh, giddy up. Heel. March. Uh, forward. Forward. Forward is a word that number five is programmed to understand, and he follows her into the house. Stephanie introduces him to her animals and names various objects for her visitor from outer space. That's input. I'm giving you great input. Uh, how about pictures? Uh, look at this encyclopedia. Input, aardvark, Abyssinia, Adams, John. Holy cow, you can read! Number five begins flipping pages faster and faster and in no time has read all the books on Stephanie's shelves. He then begins to pick up objects, identifies them, and drops them on the floor. Hey, come on! This may be hilarious where you come from, but on this planet it's considered, well, rude. Hey, I'll turn on the TV. How about this? Input! Number five is fascinated. 
He rushes over to the TV and watches intently. When Stephanie comes down the next morning, he is still watching. She turns it off. Have you been watching all night? Number five turns the set on again. Haven't you had enough of this stuff? Have a heart. Have a heart? Don't cry, little girl. Smile your tears away and dozens of other hits all in this big two-record set. Oh, you learned to talk. Replicate, reproduce, imitate. Are you tired of bills piling up? Simplify your life with a counted in a can. Hey, come on. You didn't come a million miles to do commercials, did you? Come outside. Look at the sunrise. Oh, beautiful, huh? Beautiful light bulb? No, sun. Beautiful, no sun? Beautiful sun. Beautiful goldfish. What? Oh, you mean the cloud. Yeah, it does sort of look like a goldfish. Number five points at a squirrel. Beautiful animal, mammal, squirrel. Now you're cooking. Beautiful animal, mammal, canine, dog, cocker spaniel. The dog lunges forward, snarling and barking. Startled, number five zooms backwards and overturns. Concerned, Stephanie rushes over to him. Oh, please don't be hurt. Say something. Beautiful, Stephanie. Oh, thank you. Hey, wait a minute. What's this written here? Prototype number five, Nova Robotics. You're a robot! I thought you were alive! Number five. Gee, I'm so stupid. Stupid, foolish, gullible, doltish, dumbbell. Shut up! Shut up, silence, hush, sit on it, can it? Hey, what am I getting upset about? Maybe there's a reward for this thing. Stephanie goes inside and rings the laboratory, telling them where they can find their missing robot. When she comes outside again, number five is exploring. Hey, you, number five, where are you going? I just called Nova and they're coming to get you and give you a tune-up. Tune-up? Input? Take you apart. See which screw is loose. Apart? Undone? Dismantle? Dissect? Disassemble. A grasshopper hops past, and number five hops after it. Jump! Yeah, jump! It's a grasshopper. Grasshopper? A thopterous insect? Oh, look what you've done, number five. You've hopped on top of him. Error. Grasshopper, disassemble, reassemble. I can't reassemble him. You squashed him. He's dead. Squash. Dead. Disassemble. Dead. Disassemble. Dead? Number five speeds off. He gets inside Stephanie's truck and scans the driving manual rapidly. Stephanie just has time to get in the back as the truck lurches out into the street with number five at the wheel. He only stops the truck when Stephanie convinces him that unless he does so, they will both be disassembled. Escape, Stephanie. Escape. What are you scared of, number five? Disassemble. Dead. You're afraid of being disassembled? Disassemble. Dead. Oh, but you can't die. You're a machine. No. No, you're not a machine? Yes. Yes, you are, or, or yes, you're not? Yes. Yes, what? Yes, not. Talk about malfunction. Not malfunction. Number five is alive. Crosby and his assistant, Ben, have picked up number five's homing signal and catch up with him at last. They can't believe what Stephanie has to say about him. He's scared that if you take him apart, he's going to die. Crosby stares at her. Where'd you hear that? Number five told me. He'd tell you if you just talk to him. That's what I've been trying to do through this terminal keyboard. I mean with your mouth. Look. Hey, number five, these guys just want to talk to you. Come out and tell them what you told me. No disassemble. 
Crosby turns to Ben. I can't believe it's listening to her and not to us. I'm amazed. At that moment, Schroeder and his guards arrived on the scene and start firing at the robot. They hit it several times and damage it. Crosby moves into the line of fire to stop them and then presses a button on the robot to immobilize it. Before he does so, number five has time to speak. Now disassemble, alive! Number five alive! Stephanie! Stephanie! The button is pressed and number five is paralyzed apart from his head. They put him into a robot transport truck and drive him back to the laboratory. But number five is not finished yet. He manages to switch himself on again and then proceeds to repair himself. In full working order again, he takes over the truck, leaves Crosby and Ben at the side of the road and drives off. He removes his homing device and tosses it into a pickup driven in the opposite direction. Then he drives back to Stephanie. She opens the door to him, wrapped in a bath towel. Attractive. Nice software. Boy, you sure don't talk like a machine. Alive, Stephanie. Number five, alive. You think you're alive, but those guys who built you say no way. You've got to get out of here. Solitude, isolation, alone, lonely. Okay, you can stay till morning. Number five turns on the TV. It's a dance film. Number five joins in, then grabs Stephanie and dances with her. She finds it quite enjoyable. Mm, not bad. Dancing fool, big finish. Right, but then I'm going to bed, and in the morning, you're going to find yourself a new home. This home, Stephanie home, number five home. The next morning, number five tries to prepare breakfast, but most of it ends up on the floor. Then an unpleasant ex-boyfriend of Stephanie's calls. He intends to tell Schroeder where number five is, and so collect the big reward. But the robot strips his car down on its component parts and he's unable to follow as Stephanie and number five make their escape in the truck. Stephanie is insistent. I'm driving. Number five explains that Crosby is the only one who can help them. She phones Nova and says that she will meet with Crosby at an isolated roadside bar. When he joins her there, she tells him the deal. Number five is alive. I know he's a machine, but hey, you're a machine, I'm a machine, we're alive. How it happens, who knows? But it has happened. Okay, believe me, I'm not against the idea, but I built this machine from scratch, and alive just doesn't compute. I know, but somehow it's true. You know, you really have nice eyes. Stephanie has left number five in a forest clearing for safety, but he is surprised by the other four robots brought out by Schroeder, who overheard Stephanie's message to Crosby. Number five, however, outwits and disables him and comes back to the bar to warn Stephanie of the trap. She is still talking to Crosby. If I show you where he is, do I have your word? You will not experiment on him? You will not flip his switches and you will not take him apart? You've got my word. Okay, I'll take you to him. Unknown to them, Schroeder has been listening. Okay, lady. While you're at it, why not take us, too? Thanks for your help, Crosby. Number five comes blasting through the wall and causes chaos. He and Stephanie escape in her truck. It breaks down and number five states the obvious. Car problem, Stephanie. Oh, that creep, Crosby. They're all alike. They come near you, number five. You blast them. No, no, disassemble. Oh, what am I talking about? I'm sorry. I just don't know what to do. Stephanie curls up in the back, and while she sleeps, number five kidnaps Crosby and brings him back. Crosby convinces Stephanie that he didn't lead Schroeder to them, 
and then sets about trying to find out if number five is really alive. When the robot laughs at a rather poor joke, he is staggered. I can't believe it! Spontaneous emotional response! I am alive, yes? Yes! All seems to be going well, but they run into Schroeder again with the army. Crosby and Stephanie get out of the truck and try to prevent the troops from damaging the robot. They won't listen. And suddenly, number five dashes out of the truck and tries to escape. Schroeder snaps out his orders. Fire at will. Don't let it reach those rocks. Number five is blown to pieces by heavy gunfire. Sadly, Crosby and Stephanie drive away. A noise in the back of the truck makes them look round, and they see a trap door open, and number five roll out. Stephanie is bewildered. Uh, number five? What? How? Oh, they blew you up! Facsimile, counterfeit, replica. Crosby understood. He made a decoy. That's incredible. The guy's a genius. I'm worried, number five. If they find out you're in one piece, it might not be safe around here. Crosby has an idea. I've got 10 acres in Montana. Great place for him to hide out and soak up input. 10 acres? That's a lot of room. Listen, do you like animals? The truck accelerates on its way to Montana and safety. And tired of being always referred to as number five, the robot suggests new names for himself. Kevin, Jimmy, Johnny Five. <laughs>